But this is search. S-E-A-R-X, and this is the GitHub repository. This is actually their GitHub sites page, or GitHub pages, um, little little uh, ditty you can go to. You can navigate to this, and then it can tell you all about, or it'll tell you all about how to install it, tell you all about all about how to use your uh, a, a, a currently existing public instance, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to open that up in a separate page, but it's really simple. If you don't want to host your own, and I'm at the point right now where I don't want to host my own. I don't want another science project like this. Um, so, yeah, I don't um, I don't want to deal with that today. We can do a tutorial about that another time, but as of today, I was already using one by Become Sovereign, and now I'm just going to change, and I'm going to show you how you can select your own search instance if you want to change to search. Why would you use search? That's the big question, right? Like, well, let's go over what they what they have listed publicly here. Search is a free internet meta search engine. What is a meta search engine? Well, it aggregates results from more than 70 different search services. Users are neither tracked nor profiled. Additionally, search can be used over Tor for online anonymity. So if you want Google level results, if you like Google's results, but you want to be able to use Google on Tor, well, guess what? If you go to google.com using a the Tor browser, say on your phone or on your laptop, Google says, hmm, we don't like these IP addresses. You're using Tor. And you, you have a hard time using that search engine. Well, with search, you can use Google or get Google results, even though you're searching on Tor or on a VPN or on both Tor plus a VPN. If you're that guy, you want to wear a pants with both suspenders and a belt. That's fine. You can do that. Um, and in certain search, certain situations, that might be the appropriate thing. Uh, but the point is search makes that possible as a meta search engine. So have all that anonymity and no tracking, right? Increase more of your privacy. But the search instances make that very, very simple. And again, they say if you are low on trust, you can definitely follow their documentation to do your own installation on something like, say, Vaulter. And if you like Vaulter, if that's a service that you're willing to use, like DigitalOcean or others, I can give you a code down in the description of this video for a huge credit. Uh, unless I'm not mistaken, I think I can still give you a 50 or a $100 credit over at Vaulter so that you can launch something like this essentially for free. You will have to fund the account by a little bit, but then that credit will be applied to your account and you can run your own meta search engine based on search essentially for free for well over a year. So you're welcome. Don't say I never did anything for you. I'm just not going to go through the full installation process. I'm going to show anybody else who doesn't want to install it, how to do it with free public instances so follow to the search instances page, which is just search, S-E-A-R-X dot space. And you'll see this huge list. I'm going to go ahead and make that text size just a little bit bigger. Actually, I need to decrease the text size because it doesn't have horizontal scaling. But it will show you what country they're all in. So maybe you, like me, you trust the privacy laws of Germany, Deutschland, D-E. Maybe you trust that a little bit more than using a search engine in the United States. Maybe that's not your pleasure. Maybe you'd prefer to go to some place in China, maybe, or Singapore. Maybe you prefer to only stay in the United States. For whatever reason, you're going to have your reasons, but you can search a country code there and it will filter out all of the other options. See that much smaller list here in the United States. Additionally, you may feel like it's very, very important to have IP version 6 control or IP version 6 support rather. And if that's the case, you can just click that box and return those. Um, but the more important options, in my opinion, are over here. The TLS, the CSP, right? They'll just tell us right now. <clears throat> so TLS grade. So show us how good the TLS connection is and how they've got a grading system there. The CSP grade and then the HTTP grade. So these are all scores to see how well these things load. I would say don't settle. If something has a score of an E instead of an A+, plus, well, filter that out by just typing in A+. Plus. Same with the CSP score, A+. Plus. Now we only have listings that have really great ratings. Here as well, under HTML, it's going to tell us if it's vanilla or if it is a, uh, a Git fork. I'm going to go with vanilla only. And what that means is it's only going to use the code 
that is native to the search GitHub repository. It's not going to do anything fancy. It's not going to alter anything fundamental about the code base on their website engines or on the website pages. So I want to go with something that is as close to what search created as possible because that code base has been audited uh, left, right, center, up to top to bottom and back. A bunch of people have been looking at this code base because they, like you and I, are very paranoid about our search. Otherwise, you wouldn't be looking over this little tutorial, right? So, yeah, we're going to, with that new um, filtering in place, we can see there's still a bunch of options. See, that's still 42 online instances, even with all of those parameters kind of like set for our, our little filtering here. Again, as I mentioned before, I'm going to prefer uh, anything that has uh, that is not in the U.S., strictly because of privacy laws in the United States, a, 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 like with the stroke of a pen, a subpoena is all it takes for a, um, a group like this to surrender all of their data over to law enforcement officers, uh, law enforcement agencies, or to anybody who asks, really. In some cases, not even a subpoena, sometimes just a, a friendly request from law enforcement. Them just saying like, well, we think it would be really good for you to help us, so please help us. By the way, here's a little bit of money. That's all it takes. That's literally all it takes. You could call it bribing, call it bribes, but in law enforcement um, sort of circles in in modern American life, they don't view it as a bribing because they're talking to private corporations, so they're just paying for data. Not a bribe, paying for data. Um, if it went the other way around, it would be a bribe because they're in public office. Weird, right? Or they, they, they perform a public role, but... Yeah, so rather than bribing these companies, they're just paying for data. So I prefer the uh, German-based companies more. Over here, the search response time, Google response time, Wikipedia response time, and the initial response time. These are all parameters you can look through as well. And that ping, that response time is lowest. We want a low number here. And I see the lowest also happens to correspond to this group out of Germany. I really like that one. Um, Paul Doherty also brings up another good point. Law enforcement generally in the United States only has to say it's an emergency. Um, so if it is a, yeah, for various numbers, uh, various reasons, by the way, they can also enter your home under the same um, pretext, right? Pretense rather, uh, just saying it's exigent circumstance. Literally just means it's an emergency. It's, it's really, you know, we, we have, we have whatever reason to believe somebody may be hurt or dying in your home. So let us in. And if you don't, you're resisting. And now you're breaking the law. It's crazy. It's crazy um, what is done under the color of law in this country. But with data, right, like the only way to prevent that stuff from being taken from you is to use the right services to begin with and make sure there's no metadata to begin with. So if you can. But very top of the list, I see this particular instance. This may change in the future, but these guys are doing really well right now. There's also this one in the United States and then so many others. This one in China, which I'm, you know, I'm a little bit less, I'm a little bit less happy to go there. I don't think I want my searches going into China for now. Um, and then several others as well. But you see all these options here. You can choose any number of them. Any number of these options are available to you. And then you can right click or just middle click on your mouse, open it up in a new tab. And you can also see this one. Um, it's really very nice theming. So you can, when you go to these instances of, of search, it looks like so many other search engines, right? It's very, very simple. Yeah, very simple with UI enhancements. Um, there you go. Simple theme uh, that is also dark. I think it happens to have sensed that that is the setting on my browser. So... <clears throat> So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but let's go for that very, very simple search. Go with milk. Now, what does milk come up with? First off, there are no NSFW options, right? There could be. If, if we didn't have any, you know, if it was no holds barred, there could be, right? Um, but pretty straightforward. Wikilist, they've got their own Wikilist option there. And then, yeah, Wikipedia, which they prefer to uh, to serve first to get that cached a lot of options cached here and then encyclopedia britannica as well as imdb a movie called milk pretty straightforward stuff nothing edgy here at all right i can actually do this live and not worry about it that's my point now 
Did any of this come up in a foreign language? No, it did not. They've got all of the parameters set to prefer English or a bare minimum to be able to see that based on the location that I'm broadcasting from either my VPN or the IP address of my browser, that it just figured out that I would need English, right? It didn't mess up. Uh, my, my good friend who runs Become Sovereign is still dialing in his, uh, his search instance. And so it was not very usable for me at that time. So I'm just using this because this seems to work. It seems to know uh, like where I need to be. Plus all of the value added tabs. There you go. Didn't find any results there. Didn't find any, didn't find any results. Yep. On music, milkshake under Spotify, all kinds of other stuff, but very usable as search engines go, I think. Um, another sort of baseline test, poop emoji. Like really? This should be about as straightforward as it comes, right? So when you say you're looking for the poop emoji, it should just be poop emojis and nothing else. Same with general. So, yep, Emojipedia, this is what we expect. And then a cached page of an unhosted Wikipedia. So, yeah, as well as iStock Photo. Everything you would expect to see from such a, like a, a benign search, right? It shouldn't do anything weird. So here's how we're going to actually add this to our un -Google Chromium or Brave or heaven forbid, if you're still on Google Chrome, you should get rid of that crap. Speaking of poop emojis, get rid of that crap. That's Chrome is one giant poop emoji that you double click on your desktop. Um, you can do better, that's what I'm saying. So any version of a, a web browser that's similar to Chromium, that's what we're gonna go over right now. You can make this work in Firefox as well, if that's what you prefer to use. So just know, looking out for you there as well. Okay, these are the settings page. Uh, this is the setting page of my ungoogled Chromium. So it says you and Google. I'm not actually logged into Google. It's ungoogled. Um, but I'm just going to scoot on down to search engine. You can see I'm currently using DuckDuckGo. I had to revert to DuckDuckGo because I just didn't have anything else ready for this browser. So I'm going to go to manage search engines, scroll on down, and add a couple of site searches. There we go. Got a few additional uh little search engines that could be an option there. I can use CoinGecko, add that as a, as a site, as a search as well. And Become Sovereign was my previous one. I'm going to go ahead and click on the edit icon. And I'm going to replace all of this domain in front of that slash and the search. And okay. Actually, that's not quite right either. Let me go back to this, this instance and everything before that, HTTPS, all the way over to the .com. And I'm just going to replace that here. And make sure I don't have two slashes, just one. Oh, wow. Okay. Apparently, I, need a, I need, do need a slash there. Then go ahead and click Save. <clears throat> and then click on the three dots and tell it to make that the default. And just like that, <clears throat> that is complete. Here's a quick on-screen representation of what you need to place. All right, the name, the shortcut, and then the URL. You can just use whatever, uh, whatever URL you see here, whichever one you think fits your needs the best. You can go ahead and... Just lasso that, copy it, and then paste that where we got this text here, right? The HTTPS, et cetera, and then place this on the end, search, et cetera. And now you have a new search engine that you can use that is a meta search engine that lets you not worry. Now, from the browser bar, I can do the same search. Poop emoji. Poop emoji. And it's going to bring me the same results that I am used to from before. And the first search, milk. And just as before, the same results in language that I understand, making it very, very simple for me. All righty, guys. Thank you for watching that little tutorial on how to add search, a meta search engine, which is totally free, totally open source, doesn't require a token, and doesn't allow for an advertising and marketing company to track you or to monetize your searches uh, thanks for watching that all the way through to the end of the tutorial.